Hello everyone, Belko here with yet another Resident Evil guide. This is a guide for the every nook and cranny achievement slash trophy using Joe. She's a much better fit for this achievement than Chris is since Joe has more inventory spaces and has access to the lockpick. If you follow my guide to a T, you will absolutely get this achievement. It's guaranteed. While the description for the achievement is vague, you basically must clear all of the rooms in the game. This doesn't outright include the key items that you need to beat the game. In fact, the achievement will unlock the moment you're about to fight the tyrant at the heliport before you use the signal rockets to call in Brad to come and rescue you. Because you need to absolutely see every single room in the game, we will be getting the 100% ending. Follow my guide entirely and you will get this achievement. Enjoy. Just relax and play. The guy's gonna start pretty much right away. I started the. Uh, let me lower this gameplay. I started on normal mode playing as Joe, like I said. I like climbing a mountain is normal mode. And I'm gonna be drinking some water throughout this because I'm still recovering from having COVID. And, you know, I just have to keep drinking water. So it's going to start right away right here in the dining room. You're going to pick up the first two items in the game. It's going to be an ink ribbon and the wooden emblem. But the room is not going to be cleared just yet. You will see me check the map every once in a while, and that's basically me just making sure that I got everything. And like I said, I fast forwarded through this, so you don't have to. The third item is coming right here. It's going to be Kenneth's tape. You don't have to even watch it later. You just got to collect it. But I do watch it, I believe, in this playthrough. The next few items are here. You're going to have a handgun magazine and two green herbs. And then we're going to go up the stairs and through the crazy murder hallway. And by all means, I suggest just making a checklist. And this is going to clear the room. You're going to see me check the map there. Well, I did in the little fast forward. Next few items are in this area. You have the golden arrow and a handgun magazine. Now, you might be wondering why I'm leaving the green herb next to the crimson head that's on the ground. It's because we're going to get it later. We're going to get it later. Do I touch the zombie correctly? Nope, I do not. I am bad at this game. I also have my controller input to the bottom left so you can kind of see how I play. Next item is the dagger. Let's pick it up right here on the side and you'll get this little defense item notification. Now we're going to head to the graveyard, actually. Here in the graveyard, there are two zombies. There's some shotgun shells, but we're not going to pick it up for now. We're going to use the green arrow and go down the stairs to get the book of curses and the sword key. As you can see me struggling with my item management here. Yes, the Book of Curses. The sword key is on the back of it. You can examine it at any time to get the sword key, but I do it when I get to the door that I need it to use it for. <laughs> that zombie grabbed me, and I dodged that one. So we're going to get the shotgun shells later because it actually let the zombies despawn later. Now we're going to get the, the first floor map and the dagger that is in the back of that area. You need the first floor map that does count as an item. In fact, the item, um, the room actually won't turn white until after you've collected the maps. So if the map's the last thing you pick up, then the room is going to be white. But when you pick the map up, the map is going to indicate that that room is red. And then when you actually exit out that little menu, it will show that it's white. And that's the dagger. And those are the only two items in this room. You're also never going to come back to this area. And this, you can't even skip this cutscene. And I don't even know if I get past this zombie clean. I did. Oh, wow. And this is when I examined the Book of Curses to get the sword key. And that's all there is to it here. We're never going to see this room again. Once you're in here, we're done. There's going to be a dagger and a hanga magazine here. 
can I just move these right uh these cases essentially but the fine china yeah the hangar magazine's pretty well hidden right here and again this is the normal mode uh, of the game hard mode has less items but the zombie spawns are kind of weird and wonky in that version I think it's best to do normal mode as much as I would recommend uh, hard. Out here is going to be two green herbs, one red herb, and the chemical for plants. Don't worry about the dogs. They actually don't really see the bother you as long as you're quick enough to get out of here. They're not much of a threat at all. So all you got to do is just grab the herbs and get out. And that's it. And yes, do consolidate your menu. Do combine herbs if you feel like you have to. And just use them. Something If you just need the space, you can use them. You're going to get plenty of healing items in this run. There's a dagger in this bathroom where this zombie is. Joe automatically kills his zombie in her file, but Chris does not. So keep that in mind. And now we're actually going to just... Uh, we're Basically what I'm doing here, I'm just going to get the... Dagger to Ingram and the shotgun. These items are completely missable if you allow Barry to save you. So make sure you get these three items in this room. Now, the reason why I got the shotgun and don't exchange the broken shotgun, because I'm trying to limit how often I, I do backtracking so that the guy can stay streamlined. So just let Barry save you and just you know let it let it happen. Just do it. <laughs> that way you never gotta come back there. I'm actually going to kill this zombie here because we come through this area quite a lot. Thankfully, I got a headshot, which is pretty awesome. Does not not always happen? It does not always happen. And here's a fuel canteen and special instructions for disposing dead bodies. Now, this room later on, we will actually come back to because there's going to be more items in place. So, while it's going to be white when you leave the room now, it's going to become red again later. Make sure that we you do return here later. Just follow the guide and you can't miss it. So here I'm just going up the stairs killing these zombies. I was like, might as well use the handgun. I have the handgun ammo to burn. Now, there's going to be a wooden mount in this hallway. We're going to go ahead and grab that. And we're going to kind of beeline around this zombie and go into the room that's behind him. And inside this room, you have the handgun magazine, a dog whistle, a lighter, and the botany book. Make sure you grab all of that. If you're playing as Chris, Chris automatically has the lighter, so there will not be a lighter in this room. Only Joe has to actually find the lighter. As I said, the botany book does matter. The notes do matter in the game. You absolutely have to pick those notes up in order to clear the room. And this is me doing some item dumping and just filling up my kerosene in case I need it. Because, yeah, that's where I burn bodies. We don't want to encounter crimson heads when we're doing these kind of runs. If you can help it, that is. Now we're going to go in this room. There's going to be a green herb in the map to the second floor. You place the wooden mount right here into the fireplace use the lighter you get the map and the wooden mount is discarded and then you just collect the green herb before you leave the room so now we're going to go to the main hall where barry is going to give us acid rounds now I put the acid rounds on here as a collection item. I don't think you actually it. I don't think it actually counts because if you have your inventory full, then Barry does not give you any acid rounds. But, you know, it's there. Oh, right here is important. So we're actually going to push this statue off the balcony. I essentially kind of corral this zombie so I don't have to really deal with him. And you're going to need to do this in order to get this blue gem. And it's the only way you can clear this room, too. So make sure you do this because you absolutely have to get that blue gem. 
We we're going to go do the dog whistle. But you can see we're going to get the dog collar. Let me equip the handgun here and go to town. This part is sped up. You do not need to fast forward. And the dog collar is going to allow us to get the imitation key, which is the key item. And there's also some herbs there if you feel like you need a heal. And you can see me struggle in, uh, in um, increased speed. <laughs> But yes, make sure you grab this. Now, if you don't have any space here like I do, leave the room. It's going to tell you you can discard the dog collar. I mean, I'm sorry, the dog whistle. Then you can return into the room. The dog collar is still on the ground. And you no longer have the dog whistle, so you can free up your inventory space. And this is where I'm just healing. I kind of just skipped past the part where I grabbed the herbs. I think I just waited there for a moment, checking the map. Now we're going to go encounter our first Crimson Head zombie by dodging this guy. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and drop some items off. Clear up some space. Now I made it a point that you can see what my inventory looks at at all times. Um, if someone's following this guy to a T, then they can just kind of get an idea of how I... Um, you know, go ahead and do that. Because inventory management is really important in Resident Evil games. Now we're going to grab the green herb that's right here by the zombie. And this is going to go ahead and clear this room. And then I equip the shotgun, I turn around, I kill this guy. Did not get a headshot. Like I said, doesn't always happen. And now I'm going to go up and do the puzzle and get the uh, the armor key. That's all there is here. It's just doing the puzzle, doing all this stuff. Shouldn't really. I mean, you should already know how to do all this by now if you're watching this guide. All right. Now we're going to go and do the serum room with Richard. But before that, we're going to go ahead and grab the dagger, the grenade launcher, and the two green herbs that are here. That means that we are going to encounter Forest and. We're going to, um, well, put Forrest down. That's what he would have wanted. Yeah, when you go to these green herbs, it automatically um, spawns Forrest. Now, for some reason, you go, you come in this room when Barry's here. Barry will give you the grenade launcher. And you can actually get these green herbs without activating forest. But if you do it this way, then you're going to fight forest. He's not that bad. As you can see, two grenade launcher bullets tend to put him down. Like I said, if you have no space for the second one, all you got to do is consume the green herb. And be glad that you can. In the original Resident Evil game, you could not heal when you had full health. So in this, you can just essentially discard green herbs. This and that's pretty cool. Now we're going to go do the Richard run. We're going to go ahead and uh, do that. Basically, we're going to go back to the save room um, on the western side of the mansion. And we're going to go ahead and grab the serum from that area. Now, it's possible to get two serums if you get bit by Yawn, which is the giant snake, then a second serum appears. And if that happens, make sure you come back here and grab the second serum or that room will not be clear. Now, running back to Richard is going to be two green herbs near his body, where he's sitting by the wall. And you're going to see that and right here. There's two green herbs right here that you're going to get. And if you're wondering why I put numbers for the, of the items, that way, if you wanted to make a checklist, you can kind of see how many items are on your game 
and it's accurate. I made sure I went through the whole process of editing the video and making sure the numbers added up. Yeah, we're going to dodge this guy. Now, you need the lighter for this room to get all the items. There's going to be a handgun magazine right here on the table. And then you have to light this candle and basically go through the process of getting the musical score part one, which is the first half of the Moonlight Sonata that you got to play on a piano. So we're going to go ahead and try to dodge these guys. Hopefully it works. I don't know. I don't remember really. See, the room is still red on the map. And in this little armor right here, there's going to be another handgun magazine. Rather, I guess it's just a cabinet. Armor is meant for clothes. That's an armor that you push, though. Now we're going to uh, basically... We're going to go do the chemicals for the plant, I believe. And then play the piano. And then... Yeah. Well, actually, okay. So this part of the game, there's actually quite a bit of backtracking. Before we do the plant chemicals, we have to kind of go and get a ton of items. So this is why I'm putting a bunch of stuff up in the box. Because this is me, like, thinking, like, oh, wait, do I need this? Do I need that? Because I had to kind of remember where things were as I was doing this. I'm trying to gauge how many spaces that I needed in order to get all the items. So yeah, we're going to come in here first. And there's a battery pack, the broken shotgun, and the ink ribbon. There's also some kerosene in here if you need it in case you're going to burn bodies. And we're just going to um, go ahead and put that broken shotgun and everything into the item box. So we're actually going to backtrack to the save room, I believe, right here. Which is what I did right there. And yeah, you can always like stack items on top of each other in the item box in this game, which is pretty cool. So if you have, if you just find the, the ink ribbons like I just did there, you can just stack it on with the other ink ribbons. Now we're going to grab the battery pack that's right here. And we're going to go, I think right here what I do is the blue gem and Keeper's Diary. There's Keeper's Diary, the battery pack, and the handgun magazine in this room. I, do I get a headshot right here, I think? I got two headshots. Look, oh my god. So glad I got that on footage. Jesus, it's so amazing. Can't believe I got two headshots. Wild. And that room is clear. Now we're going to go back to the item box, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this part just requires the most amount of backtracking. Outside of this area, um, there's really not that much backtracking. So... Hopefully, you know, this guy does help you in that because I really did my best to make sure you had to make as few item box stops as you need. Yeah, right here, we're going to grab the blue uh, gem. And of course, you can only obtain this if you push the statue off from the second floor balcony. So that's a pre a prerequisite for this item. Now we're going to go in a tiger statue room and you're going to get shotgun shells from this blue gem. I think I messed up right there. I think I went to the, the uh, plant room without the chemicals and I was like, oh shit. So I just <laughs> cut the footage. Make sure you have the plant chemicals on you. Okay, people. Now, you can use the uh, chemicals right here and make sure you set it to red. 
That way you kill the plant. There's going to be five green herbs in here. And you're going to get the first out of four debt mask right here as well. Be careful here because I don't know if you hit green by accident and it kills the plants, like the, the green herbs. I'm not sure if that clears the room or not. So make sure you don't do that. And there's five green herbs. As you can see, I'm speeding through the footage basically just to grab all of them. And then we're going to go ahead and use, yeah, free up a space, grab the mask. Now, when you grab this mask, the zombies that are outside the windows are going to bust through. That's the trigger for them. So if you want to come and grab the green herbs and then just come back and get the mask a little later, then you can essentially, you know, mitigate that in case you're doing this out of order for some reason. Now, where I'm going to go, there's a reason why I went to this room and left it so I can open the door and then come down here to discard the mansion key, the sword key, that is. And then I came down here and I grabbed the dagger now. Um, I just find it easier to grab this now than later because I feel like it's pretty easy to overlook. Oh, one thing I want to mention is that elevators in this game remain red there's no items on the elevators so if you look at the map and you see that weird red like that red square that indicates an elevator that does not mean there's any items there and here we're going to get the second part of the musical score the gold emblem and trevor's diary and i'm kind of speeding through it so you did the push uh push that bookshelf to get the second part of the Moonlight Sonata. And that's all there is to this room. Now we're going to go ahead to the main like dining room area. And we're going to use the golden emblem here. That we've grabbed from using the wooden emblem earlier. Do this puzzle, grab the shield key. And then we're going to head to the snake. So, this is going to make you discard the shield key, which is great. Now, the best part about this is that well, this is where the second death mask is. But what's great about this part of the game is that if you just leave the room, Richard will die. And he won't drop the assault shotgun. So, you can just leave and not worry about having like any consequences. So, when Richard dies, just leave. The room is cleared. So, the assault shotgun does not count towards this. If you let Richard die. If for some reason you fight the snake and Richard survives and then he gets eaten by the snake, you have to pick the assault shotgun off the ground. Ignore the fact that I got poisoned. Try not to get poisoned. And here's the third death mask. You just gotta solve this puzzle, grab it, and the room is cleared. And that's literally it. Yes, we'll take the jewelry box. Yeah, Jewelry Mask has a debt mask in it. You don't have to open it now, but if you want to, you can. But I open it later whenever I actually insert the mask into their slots. Now, the first aid spray and, and the incendiary rounds are going to spawn now after you get uh, the mask from the snake uh, here. I'm pretty sure that's what the trigger is for it. But Barry's going to leave this in here, so make sure you pick these up. Um, and after you pick these items up, this room is cleared for the rest of the game. So now we came and picked up these very nice items. And this I'm just doing inventory right here. So now we're going to make our way up and go into this uh, room and we're going to grab the red herb that's right here. And then I believe I go in the, yeah, this room right here in the bottom. And I believe there's three items in here. Yes, there are an ink ribbon, a green herb and a first aid box. 
And then once you're done in here, we're going to go in the room opposite from this one. And do the whole puzzle and get the wind crest, essentially. But this is going to clear that area. If you hear any creaking, that's my chair. <laughs> I'm also drinking some water too, so if you might hear me drink, that's what I'm doing. And here is Researcher's Will, a fish hook, the bee specimen, the lore of the bee, and then eventually the wind crest. You essentially have to solve this puzzle here. So you gotta grab the bee specimen, the lore of the bee, and you have to combine the lore of the bee with the fish hook. And then once you grab this you combine yeah you combine the fish hook with this and then you this is where you would put the bee specimen on that wall and so this goes on the hook wall where you got this bee specimen from and all you gotta do is basically swap it and then you obtain the wind crest and that's all there is in this room The cutscene's hilarious. Strangely floats in midair once you move away from it. And now we're almost done with the mansion, actually. At least the part, the first part of it. We'll be more items later on. So now I'm actually going to grab the mask and we're going to go ahead and fight the Crimson Elder boss fight. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I was like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? So now we're going to um, go through the painting room. We're going to solve this puzzle. And this is going to lead us to get the fourth mask. And now we're going to grab the shotgun shells. Like I said, the zombies despawn. You get all four masks. So it's a lot safer to get the shotgun shells now. And then there's going to be some shotgun shells um, near the coffin. So we're going to insert the mask in order. It's eyes, the jewelry box mask, the no nose mask, and then I don't ever care to remember the fourth one, which I think it's no mouth. I got the shotgun here because no, I, I use a grenade uh, launcher kill him, but I have the shotgun here with me just to have it. Now there's stone and metal object is right here, and there's also gonna be the uh, shotgun shells. And we are almost out of the mansion. There's one more zombie here. I just kill him because why not? And this is the last room that is part of the mansion before you leave. There's going to be shotgun shells, a battery pack that's very well hidden. So please do not miss it. And there's going to be that first aid spray that's right there in the front of the screen. And that's going to be essentially the the mansion one. As you can see, well, if you look at my map, if you look at your map as well, it should all be white now. Mostly. The rest are just rooms you haven't been able to enter yet. Yeah. A good chunk of the items are in the very beginning of the game. There's roughly 200 and I think there's 230 items. I'm not sure. But now here we're at Lisa's cabin. 
uh, cabin. We're going to get the courtyard map right here on the wall, the square crank, and there's going to be a family picture that is pretty well hidden on the desk. It, that's why right there, Jill was like looking around because I knew it was somewhere around there, but I was mashing the, if you, you can look at my uh, controls, I was mashing the uh, confirm button. I couldn't get it for some reason. So just make sure that you know it's there and you're going to see me actually grab it on the way out after I get the square crank. Now, I don't examine the crank or the keys, but if you examine them yourself, then you will see what kind of keys and items they actually are. So here's a square crank. And grabbing this is going to trigger Lisa to enter the cabin now when we go back out. So try your best to make sure you get all these items before you leave the cabin so you don't have to deal with Lisa at all. You just got to run past her. See, I knew it was somewhere around here and I was looking for it. I was like, is it on the bed? Where is it? But it's like kind of, yeah, it's like hidden right there. It's a fan, it's called the family picture, and that's all it is. And now we're just gonna encounter Lisa and run. And if she hits you, just heal. That's all you gotta do. Just run past her, do your best. I believe in you. Fight your fears and survive. And on the way out, make sure you have the wind crest as well, just like I do before you do this part. Because you can get the Magnum right here. And right here, we're going to get the Sun, Moon, and Star Crest. Um, this puzzle kind of takes a while. Even though I'm fast forward in like times five speed, it still just takes this long. All you got to do is check the back of these crests. And then you just insert them into the other gravestone. And you will get the Magnum. And you might get attacked by that, by that crow in the process. Because it's pretty hard to... Do not do that. So now you get the Magnum if you do that. And you have a really good gun for the rest of the game if you need it. Now what's funny is I always shoot this crow that's right here. You'll see it. I don't know. It's, it's just it's just something that I always do. It's a tradition. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just do dumb shit. You drink some water. Now, the dogs don't spawn until after this cutscene right here. And you're going to get a green herb and a blue herb that's right here. Now, it's possible for the dogs to um, to react to Jill right here. See how he's, like, going down? And he's like, uh-oh, there's some bitch there. But then he doesn't stop. Now he starts to run. Once they get aggro, they will come after you. Just do your best and grab those two items. And we're just making our way to the um, the residency, which is where all the scientists sleep in the game. And that's what we're about to do right now. There's going to be an item right after this gate. It's going to be a single red herb. And if you want, combine the red, green, and blue herbs you just got. Why not? Fun for the whole family. You can just run past the snakes. They won't bother you at all if you just keep moving. Now, right here are three blue herbs. Thankfully, at this point of the game, the rest, like the rest of the item hunting, it's pretty linear. So you don't have to do as much backtracking as you did in the mansion. But as you saw earlier in the mansion, I made it sure to not do that. So there's a battery pack and an ink ribbon in this safe room. Just put up the green herbs if you don't have the space for the ink ribbon, which is basically what I did right here. And this is just some item management. Even though I'm fast forwarding and I'm pretty sure you can understand what I'm doing. So there are two green herbs in this room. There's a red book. A first aid box and shotgun shells. And then um, the other green herb is going to... I'm going to get on the way out. You'll see where it's at. I was like, wait, the room is still red. Where is it? I think I went upstairs. And you're going to see... Uh, you're going to just see ass on that wall right there. <laughs> <laughs> just 
booty, just straight booty. And it looks like the Predator meme with Arnold and uh, was it Carl Weathers? Yeah. And that's the second green herb. Try not to worry about the spiders too much. I mean, if they poison you, you just got a blue herb. And there's a mix of green and blue herb right there. This is just me pushing the box here. That way I don't have to worry about taking damage. And now we're going to go and here. Now you're gonna, you probably saw that map that's on the wall outside, but we're not getting that yet. So in here is Plan 42 report. And then inside the bathroom, there's the residence key, which I believe is room 002. And I do kill the zombie with the uh, flame round, the incendiary round, just to turn that way it won't become a crimson head. And it's just so much easier to kill that zombie than trying to dodge it all the time. It really is. And this is some more item drops before I go into the next room. And this will discard that key. And now in here, you're going to see that guy, uh, the zombie. There's going to be a self-defense gun. With, and then with the self-defense gun, you get the censored note. I say that because you'll see the title of the note. And I don't think YouTube would like it if I said that in my video. So I'm just not going to take that risk. So we're going to grab the handgun magazine. And inside the bathroom is going to be the control room key. And then you're done here and you never got to come back. Pretty great. It's pretty great to not have to come back. So now we're going to head down to the sharks after we make some item drops. And doing his boring box puzzle. And there's going to be a single green herb after this box puzzle. And then we're going to go and encounter the sharks. And do the whole uh, section where we have to stop um, the shark from busting through the glass and flooding the whole area. And it's also going to discard the control room key. I just speed right through this. It's, you know, it's not hard to figure out on your own. But you can't interact with any of the items until you complete the puzzle. So we're going to get the Aqua Ring map, which is right here in the wall. And there's going to be a first aid box that's on the floor in front of the valves right here. And that's all there is here. Inside this room is shotgun shells. And that's it. This section is pretty straightforward. Just kill the shark, grab the key. It's going to be the gallery key. And this we're going to be using in order to... Um, get to where we need to go in order to fight Plant 42, which we're not going to actually fight Plant 42. We're just going to make V-Jolt, and there's a reason why. Magnum rounds are going to be right here. And so the reason why we're going to not fight Plant 42 and instead make V-Jolt is because... The trophy, the achievement for the game, Every Nook and Cranny, does require you to essentially enter every single room, whether or not there's items there or not. And so, yeah, there's going to handgun mag and set the side spray in this area. So the reason why we're going to go ahead and make V-Jolt is because it's going to allow us to go into every single room in the game. And, I mean, you might as well make it if you got to go down there. And so here we're going to grab the, the handgun mag, the spray, and we're going to go and grab the map that's on the outside of this wall finally. And we're going to spray the bugs. So this is a residence map that's right here.
and there's gonna be the residence key for room 003 right here. And when you go to open the door, it's gonna discard the key for us. Inside of here is the white book. It's gonna be the organic chemistry lab experiment. That's the name of this white book, apparently. <laughs> And that counts as one of your notes. This is a puzzle that we're going to do with a naked lady on it. Now, before we go into this room, we're going to come to this bathroom and just pull the plug or whatever, because again, every nook and cranny requires you to enter every single room in the game. So even though there's no items in here, we're still going to come in there just to do it. And then the red herb is a single red herb right outside here. And I grab it now because um, earlier I didn't have the item space for it, and you might not if you're following this guide. So make sure you grab the red herb that's right here in front of this door. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make some item drops because I just don't have enough space for things. Because I need you need at least four spaces for the four empty bottles that you have to get to make V-Jolt. And this room combination is any combination of the three numbers, five, six, and three. Just keep plugging and chugging until you get it. As long as you have the combinations of five, six, and three, three, six, five, whatever it might be, it's random every time. So just keep entering it until you just get it. Now you have to get all four empty bottles in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and make VJOL in the process. Um, the way this works is each chemical has a value I have a number that designates a value and you have to make chemical 20, which is VJOL. So this would be chemical three, water is considered a chemical one, and then there's chemical six. And you basically just gotta combine them until you make 20. And now we're gonna go downstairs and we're gonna use VJOL on the roots. And that's gonna allow us to not just enter the room, but also kind of clear the room. And it's gonna discard the four bottles. So that's what I did right there. So make sure y'all go and do that. I know I sped up the footage, but so just go and do it, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and fight Plant 42, but Barry's going to kill it for us as we use V-Jolt. We're going to collect the helmet key, and now we're going to go back to the save room, and that's actually where I make a save. And at this point, the uh, residence should be clear, so if you want to stop and check your map to make sure it is, um, it's. I mean, it should be cleared. I did get the achievement at the end of this video. You're going to see it pop up. Skip to the end of the video to see the achievement pop up so you know that this guide is is uh, foolproof. So make sure you always make sure I have blue herbs on my way back because you might get poisoned by the snakes. It's a little weird to dodge. So now we're going to encounter hunters. And again, there's going to be some new items that spawn in here. Another battery pack is going to be a first aid spray and grenade rounds or grenade shells, I believe what they're called in this game. But make sure you grab these three items. And that's going to count towards the achievement. So I'm going to go ahead and you're going to see me like kill the hunters. It's going to be like sped up, but you know, just kill the hunters. You only really should have to kill three max which is the ones you see me kill here. And you're gonna see me uh, grab the items I need to kill the snake pretty quickly. So I'm just getting through this puzzle. And in this room, there's also a dagger, which you will see me get at the end of this puzzle right here. There's a dagger right there. And then when you fall into the hole, when you climb down into the hole, there's going to be uh, the last volume book part one. And you're going to get another like one of Trevor's diary. I just call it Trevor's diary, too, since it's clearly supposed to be like the missing pages from earlier that you might that you find in the first diary. And down here, there's a few spiders and zombies. So the shotgun shells and the man the B1 mansion map is here. They're pretty well hidden. So just you will see me like I, I saw it and I'm like, wait, no, I know I saw it. And I just grabbed it. 
And then the mansion uh, basement one map is right there on the wall. Be careful. If you get poisoned, there's going to be blue herbs in the zombies. Like next to the zombies in the next area. I don't know how he hit me there. <laughs> I have no idea how that spider hit me. So in here, there's going to be a red herb, a blue herb, a dagger, and a handgun magazine. And just, I mean, if you if you want to kill the zombies here, that's totally fine. You have enough rounds, because you do get more acid rounds later. I don't think I killed them. <laughs> um, I think I just deal with them this way. I don't know. I got away with murder there. Jesus. But you have to turn the elevator on. See, that's what you have to do this part. And the handgun magazine is going to be by the, um, by the door you need to go through. Right here. Now, again, I made this guide purposely in a way to where you don't have to always go to the save rooms to drop off items. So if you have only two spaces left, you're going to see in a moment that that's not going to matter. Two green herbs right here and a red herb. <laughs> this guy's trying so hard. I think he does actually grab me. Does he? No. I think the other zombie grabs me. <laughs> I don't know. I was just making sure there was no hidden items over there. Now, in this room is going to be acid shells, shotgun shells, the battery that's for the courtyard, and a battery pack. Understand that the battery pack and the battery are not the same item. And that's it in this room. And now we're going to go ahead and exit out of here. And I'm going to go all the way to the stake. And here's two green herbs in the Lost Book Volume 1. Your inventory should look a lot like mine if you're following the guide. And by all means, like, pause and slow down the video where I fast forward it during the inventory segments. I purposely fast forward it so people who just want to get to an item or maybe see where all the items are can just seamlessly do it. You have, you know... There's controls beneath you on this video that can help you pause it so you can kind of or slow it down. So go ahead and do that if you feel you must. So just yeah, this is the lost book volume two. That should be all the items now in this area. Thankfully, where we're going is that there's a save room nearby. So I'm gonna unlock this door first, and then I'm gonna go downstairs and drop off items in the in the item box right here beneath the stairs. And since every nook and cranny requires you to enter every single room, and at least clear the rooms, um, we are going for the best ending. So you're going to actually see me save Chris and fight the tyrant at the heliport later. Now going upstairs, we're going to go enter that room that I unlocked. And there's going to be grenade shells, a dagger, a note called the mail to the chief, the yellow gem, and the red gem. I think this room is pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure you grab that note. It's on that table that I'm grabbing right now. And so I speed through this part just to make it faster because it's a little slow. Now, coming down these stairs, the hunters will bust through the window, but if you just run past them, they will never, ever, ever touch you. 
So now we're going to go into the tiger statue again, and we're going to get the MO disc number one. It's the first one out of three. It requires a yellow gem, and it's the only way to get the 100% ending. You need all three of these discs in order to save Chris. And your map, sh yeah, your map should look a lot like mine did there. If you want to go back and pause the video, by all means, do it. Now we're going to go through this door, and this is going to be the last time we use the helmet key. There's going to be a handwritten note that's right here. The note that doesn't have a title, so I just call it the handwritten note. And there's going to be a single ink ribbon that's right around this corner inside this desk. And that's all there. That's all the items here. Now, coming into this room is the room with the giant mirror and that single zombie. And there's going to be quite a few items in here. So make sure you have the space, which it should be a green herb, a dagger, and a jewelry box. It's interesting to me that there's blue herbs right here because there's nothing in this vicinity that can actually, like, poison you, per se. Now, I do believe that spiders spawn where does dogs first jump through the windows, but... I mean, there's just nothing else that could potentially poison you here, you know? So I have no idea why those are there. It's kind of funny if you ask me. Just solve this puzzle real quick just so I could open this jewelry box and get the emblem key out. And I'm going to go to the graveyard or the painting room where we saw that first hunter in the game. And we're going to go through the emblem door right here. And there's going to be the metal object, shotgun shells, and the battery pack here in this room. Now, the shotgun shells are a little tricky to obtain. You do have to make sure that you look directly into um, the desk that it's located in with that black phone that's right there to the left. Yeah, so make sure you click on that right, and that's how you get the shotgun shells. And then the battery pack is like right here to the right. It's very well hidden. We're gonna do with some item dumps. We don't need the MO disc for a while. We'll grab the battery and we need the square crank in order to advance through the game. And we're about to go down below. At this point, we are completely done with items in the mansion, except for one thing we have to grab before we fight Lisa, but it's a key item and you really can't miss it. Now coming down here, we're gonna go and find Enrico. And Enrico's going to have the hexagonal crank for us. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and grab the handgun magazine. It's right here on the ground. Now, there is another item in this room, but we're going to get it on the way out. And then here, all you get to do is talk to Enrico once he's shot to death. And just grab the hexagonal crank. And then the hunter's going to spawn when you try to leave the room. Just run past him. He was never going to mess with you. I remember that really scaring me the first time I played this game when I was a kid. The Hanga Magazine is right here. And I just grab it on the way out because it's just, I don't know, it's just a straighter line, I guess. There's less backtracking to do. Two hunters spawn in here, but if you just run like I did, then you should be fine. Just hug that wall on the side of Jill. Now, in this area, it's going to be a single ink ribbon and a green herb. The green herb you can get after you use the hexagonal crank. And we don't need the square crank anymore. You, you, don't even, you don't need it at all for the rest of the game. So the green herb is right here to Jill's right, right before the door. So make sure you grab that before you exit. And that's everything in there. And here we just got to dodge boulders. It looks like a cocoa pebble. You can actually, there's a mod that turns Chris into the boulder. And there's shotgun shells right here where the boulder was. So now we're going to encounter the first, uh, the, the black tiger, which is a boss in the game. It's a giant spider. 
There's only one item in here, and that's a, that's a survival knife that's uh, shining right there in those barrels. So go ahead and grab that, and you're going to basically just use it to cut the webbing. I think the spider actually um, shoots the door for me right here. Which, it's kind of hard to get him to do that, but if he does it, it does actually save you time. It's one of the few, like, major RNG things in the game. And there's two blue herbs in the courtyard basement one map that's right out here. So if you get poisoned by the spider, there's blue herbs right here. I don't know what happened to it. Oh, yeah, never mind. There it is. Good old boulder. Now we're going to go in behind this boulder is a first aid box. We're going to go ahead and grab that. And that's everything in there. And we just only have two more rooms to clear, which is going to be this room. Um, it's just a puzzle. The only item in here is the cylinder you obtain for solving the puzzle. So just go ahead and do that. I speed through it all. Nothing much to it, but to do it. Drinking water. <laughs> That's what those sound effects are. I have a water bottle. Yeah, just push this statue into here. Grab the cylinder. And then we're going to go back to that red room at the other side. And we're going to grab <laughs> the shaft. Jeez. And we're going to combine that with the cylinder to solve the puzzle and go downstairs. Well, down the elevator and encounter Lisa. A spider clipped me, and that's really rare for that to happen. That, that could have been pretty disastrous. I could have easily gotten killed right here. But um, that then there's something that really doesn't happen a lot. But it's it's very rare that a spider can attack me like it just did there. Now. We're going to run past these hunters, and we're going to go ahead and grab the shaft, Giggity. And the password here is um, 4231. And then basically the cutscene's going to play with Barry when you activate the elevator. And just make sure you grab everything that's up here, because once you get in the elevator, there's no coming back up. You would have to uh, get back to the mansion and go all the way around and come here, which is pretty annoying. So you're going to see me, like, the way I encounter Lisa, she teleports. So I ran up there and ran up the stairs to activate her there. And there's a red herb and green herb right here. You can just combine them. So, like, whatever direction you go, Lisa will appear there. So that's why I went one direction and ran the other way around. So I can avoid uh, taking damage from her altogether. Now up here, there are, there's the battery pack and handgun magazine and magnum rounds. And that's it. And then you just gotta push the box onto the gondola and do all this stuff. I pretty much just speed right through it. You, you'll see me fast forward in a second. I just kind of try to slow down whenever I pick up items so you can actually see me do that. And that way you're not like, wait, 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 what do you do? Basically, that's the reason why I did it. Now, I'm going to make Lisa go down there, and that's why I did that, and oh, went the wrong way. <laughs> and then we're going to grab the, the broken flamethrower. That's right down these steps. You just got to basically do this little puzzle. 
And that's all there is to it. And go ahead and grab the broken flamethrower. And we're, I would say we're, I think, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta remember how many items are in a game. Because then I can actually calculate the percentages of um, how many items are in each place. But honestly, like I said, the mansion has the majority of the items. In fact, you're going to get, you know, a little, a little under half of the items in the game through to just the first time you go through the mansion alone. So now in here, there's going to be a few things. A jewelry box, which inside of it is the stone ring, which is why I said jewelry box plus stone ring. And there's also a family picture that is at, that is in the jewelry box. So when you open it, you will get the stone ring, and you will also get a note. Now, when you pick the jewelry box, the room will be clear. But when you open it, you will receive those two items, the stone ring and the family picture. So don't go looking around for a stone ring in a family picture. You're going to see me open this right here, and it's going to show that the stone ring is there. And then it's going to say there's an, a picture inside or whatever. And that's all the items in that area. And now we're going to go up to the cabin, basically. And we are going to leave and go back to the mansion and go downstairs to the lab. And make sure you grab the last books here, because you're going to use them anyway in a moment. Um, this Lisa segment is not that bad. Actually, I think I made an effort to just try to, like, actually defeat Lisa here. Just to show that you can do it. And now, you grab the stone and metal object. And this is going to be your last item in the mansion altogether. So we're almost done. Pretty good. This is definitely more streamlined, I think, than my invisible enemy guide. Because the invisible enemy guide... You know, you can't see the enemies, so I had to really stop and explain why I'm making certain decisions and whatnot in that guide. So this guy is a little bit shorter than that one. So I, what do I do here? I do something. Oh, I save. That's what I do. <laughs> of course, I save. I tend to save before this boss fight if I'm playing more casually. Because Lisa's is pretty scary. and She can kill you in one hit if she hits you and knocks you off. So I get the back I get the gun back to Barry and I just basically drop the stones, beat Lisa. I think you see me kill her. <laughs> it's fun. I just hug the Barry just to see the cutscene. I don't know. I just wanted to see it. Now we push the rest of the stones off. And whenever the coffin opens up, we're gonna go and grab an item out of the coffin. It should be uh, a note, it should be a picture. Another family picture. And then that's that area clear. And then we're going to actually go and continue the game. And we will be opening the books to get the wolf medal and the eagle medal. They don't count as items per se, but they do. I just include them in the guide just to just to like have it there. Again, they don't really count towards every nook and cranny, but. I just wanted to just, I don't know, I just wanted to at least account for them. Now, the lab is very short, thankfully. So, at this point, we were basically kind of done. And you should have everything up until this point. So, if you have a checklist, you could just go ahead and make sure that it's there. So, there's going to be a... An e on the ground I'm going to get after this little... Because I, I do transition from my save right here, yeah. So there's the ink ribbon on the ground. We're going to go ahead and pick it up. It's the only item in this room. And nothing else appears in here. What am I even doing? <laughs> like, what... Like, I did cut the footage there. I don't know. I think I just look at my maps. If you look at your maps, everything should be clear up to this point. This room has two green herbs and the second MO disc. Or the MO disc.
Damn it, it's gonna be up here to your left. It's gonna be behind a zombie. Near the visual data room. <laughs> now, I do burn this zombie right here. Is that I'll have Barry's Magnum. And that way he won't ever become a Crimson Head. And there's going to be a dagger right in this corner. And I do kill this zombie also, I believe. I don't know. I was bored. Sometimes you can get trapped like that where the fire just hits you and there's nothing you can do about it. Now we're gonna use the lab key on these two doors just to just be able to discard it. And I'm actually wait, not yet. Sorry, I jumped ahead of myself. But in here, there's gonna be Magnum rounds, first aid box, the V Act report, which could be right next to the computer on a desk, and a battery pack that's pretty well hidden. And you will be seeing me grab all of those items. Took me long enough to find it? <laughs> Jesus. John and Ada. It's the login and the password. And the password for Basement 2 is cell. C-E-L-L. -L. And make sure you open up Basement 3 or it will not be open when you get there. So now we're going to go back upstairs. We're going to go to the visual data room. And there's going to be the third MO disc, MO disc three, a first aid spray. And there's going to be a file called the security protocols. There's going to be shotgun shells, the lab key, and a map of the lab. There's a lot of items in this room. And they're pretty well hidden. So make sure you're able to grab them all. There's a shotgun shells right there on, next to that uh, cabinet where you got the security protocols. Uh, note the password here is 8462 it's going to open a door that allows you to grab a key and then the, the lab map is really well hidden here actually it's inside of a cabinet and you'll see how well hidden it is in a second i do watch kenneth's tape here Rest in peace, buddy. This is me just mashing the A button like, is there anything here? I knew there was something in one of these cabinets, and it's right there. It's the map of the lab. Like, it's the most random place <laughs> to get it, but it's there. So now we are actually, I think, do I? No, I just, okay, I just consumed the first aid spray, so... I don't think I actually go to the save room. I think I go to the save room that's on the way to where we need to go first. So yeah, this is where we're gonna use the lab key. And there's shotgun shells and a battery pack in here. Now the shotgun shells is on this side, okay? So once you get the shotgun shells, just go ahead. And you have to push this um, right here to grab the shotgun shells. Now, like I said, the shotgun shells are just on this side of the room. There's a second side of the room. It's still going to be red on your map. So you have to go through the vents in order to appear on the other side to get the battery pack. It confused me at first as well, and it might confuse you. So basically, we have to go through the vent again right here. 
And then now it's going to bring us on this side where we're going to, I'm going to use the Emo disc here. And you're going to see the battery pack next to this uh, console, this Nintendo GameCube. Yes, it actually is a GameCube, but they made it look less like a GameCube in this version of the game. In fact, it actually had this design in the Wii version, the Wii U versions as well. Well, the Wii version rather. And that's once you get the battery pack, it's going to clear that room. And I just dodge this Chimera very uh, skillfully, I must say. And now we're actually going to go and advance through the story. Now, I do kill both of the zombies in this room, too, but at first we're going to go into the save room. First aid spray, there's an ink ribbon, and there's some grenade shells. And that's all there is here for us. What was I doing? Oh, I just think I needed ammo. So yeah, I killed that zombie and I killed the other one. And then we're going to run in here and there's going to be a chimera that we kill. And we're going to get the, the fuel supply capsule. Be careful if you shoot this chimera because it's very easy to miss. So if you catch him mid-jump like I did because he's trying to get on the ceiling, then yeah, you will hit him. But if he reaches the ceiling, um, I think it's actually best to just let him grab you and use a defense item and just shoot him while he's on the ground. If you're doing it casually, that is. So yeah, we need to grab the fuel supply case, and we're basically going to go on the other side of the lab. And we're going to enter the hallway that's on the way to Chris. There's a first aid box right here on the floor. Now, I don't go in this room just yet to get the x-rays, but we are going to go do the other stuff first. Never mind, I do grab this. Don't listen to me. I grab the x-rays in the researcher's letter, which is a letter that basically tells you how to do the password for the computer. And the x-ray puzzle is actually what teaches you what the password is. You don't need to place them on there. You just got to pick them up. In fact, yeah, you don't have to really do any real method to solve the puzzles. You will see me later. I'll grab the slide filter, which is the photos you will use in the projection, the visual data room to see that Wesker is a bad guy. But you don't have to use it. You just can put them up. So there's a fax in here, the slide filter, and then there's incendiary rounds. And then you can also um, use an MO disc, which is what I do here. That's why I had both of them with me. Yeah, the slide filter is interesting. Like I said, you can use it to um, bring out a password for the, the console that's in the visual data room. But also, like I said, it shows you, oh, Wesker's the bad guy. Now, I don't run at all because I don't want you guys to run, but there is a speed run method in order to bypass this scenario. But I just run. I just walk the whole time for the sake of the guide. And now we can actually run. And basically all we're doing here is we're going to get a battery pack in this room, but we're also going to use the, the last MO disc. dodge these chimeras very skillfully there's a battery pack right here in this corner i think it's pretty well hit and it kind of blends in with the color of the walls a little bit this is like the boiler room of the game so then i'm gonna go and activate the computer here and then we're gonna go and fight the tyrant in the um the lab itself
but we're gonna make sure we're well equipped and whatnot. You don't have to do it the way I did. I just grabbed these items and I was like, ah, I just wanna waste them, like the South Defense item. There's shotgun shells right here. Make sure you pick them up. So now we're gonna pick the tyrant, and then Wesker's gonna have a note for us to pick up too once he's once the tyrant's dead. It's an observation note. But we're, we're gonna go and unlock the doors first and then go get the, the diary from Wesker. It's basically William Birkin's diary. So this will clear the room. It might, I'm not sure if it's red before you pick up the note, but it probably is. But regardless, still pick it up just in case. Now we're basically done with the game. We just have to go and save Chris. And then we have to go fight the tyrant. And that's it. So... This room is tricky. You have to immediately re-enter the room, and there's shotgun shells right here on the floor. So when you go and save Chris, it will make you it will make you like walk out the door. So make sure you turn around and come back in that room. Not much really here to say. At this point, we're just beating the game and collecting the, the remaining key items. And there's like, I think, two more items that are consumables right here, shotgun shells in the first aid box. And then we're actually gonna go ahead and get the fuse unit, which is the key item we need in order to beat the game. And I have more than enough ammo to kill the time, right? so we're gonna be okay there. I love that the last healing item you collect in the game is a single green herb. It's like, here, good, good. So now we're going to get the fuse unit. And whenever we exit outside, the trophy or the achievement is going to unlock. So yeah, there's technically only 225 items we need to collect. Um, the signal rockets don't count. Because like I said, once you, go in, once you go up this elevator, if you fall this guy to a T, you will unlock... The achievement right here you're gonna see it pop up in the bottom right section of my screen the moment Jill walks out this elevator so yeah that's basically it that's essentially the guide um, you can just watch me kill the tyrant for fun if you want there it is achievement unlocked I purposely waited to get this on PC just to make this guide for you guys and so I want to just say thank you to everyone who's been supporting me the last year I've been absent from YouTube. I've been focusing on college, which is hilarious. Um, but basically, I <laughs> I actually received my first YouTube payout, which is kind of awesome and really encouraged me to want to finish like getting together and making his videos and stuff for all of you. So I really just can't say thank you enough to everyone who subscribed and everyone who is Done that. I mean, all the money that I'm making from this is going straight to my college tuition and like my child. <laughs> so I really do appreciate you all just watching and loving Resident Evil as much as I do. I can't believe I missed the first time. So yeah, that's it. That is every nook and cranny. Follow this to a T. You cannot go wrong. And that's basically it. There's not much I have to share. Um, I am working on one more guide, which is going to be the real survivor mode guide. Uh, real survivor mode is actually not hard, but um, I think some people would appreciate a guide for it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So yeah, so that's essentially it. I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this, this channel I created. I have a lot more coming out. And I hope you all love that. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Collect your heroes.